Hello guys and welcome and back to a free plugin Friday where we look at free plugins that can help out your productions in all kinds of ways. Now, I just wanted to say a quick thing about subscriptions. Only 2% of people that watch my videos are subscribed, which is a disappointingly low amount. And it kind of makes me a bit sad because it means when I come out with new content and such, a lot of people aren't notified. It might not hit the YouTube algorithm. And a lot of people that may benefit from it, may enjoy it, miss out. So please, if you haven't subscribed, Think about it. Think about a little subscription. You know, it's free on YouTube. It doesn't really take much away, um, you know. And if you hate all my content, then you can unsubscribe. It's fine. Now, on to the plugin. So today we are looking at, I think it's pronounced Calum Audio, or Calum Audio, uh, tape cassette 2, which emulates, yep, a tape cassette. I was born in 1990. So unlike some of the younger probably producers out there, I had a shit ton of cassettes. I used to record cassettes off the CD player because um, things with CDs and such, they skip, same with records. So if I wanted to dance around as a six-year-old, uh, I wasn't allowed to play CDs at like birthday parties and stuff. So that's what got me into audio was recording two cassettes from the CD player using a cassette recorder. And then when I got, uh, my dad had a four track cassette recorder as well. And that's how we record a lot of music. And I learned how to use that when I was nine. So I got into audio recording cassettes and I have a fond memory of Boombox's cassettes. They're lo-fi quality, how they sound terrible. And I kind of love it. And that's what this plugin does. Okay, so let's start off by talking about the features of tape cassette two. Now it obviously emulates a cassette tape so it has some features relating to generally the idiosyncrasies of cassettes. So starting off is this IR, which is a type one cassette. Now, cassettes had different types. You had kind of the consumer types for the cheapest to manufacture, kind of had a very dull sound. Then you had a uh, metal type, which was kind of the opposite and, you, and all these different types. And you know, the more expensive you got, generally they're a bit more balanced. So I think there's type one, which is your consumer cassette, which is kind of what most of these plugins will go after, which is the most lo-fi thing, the thing you had in your Sony Walkman, that kind of thing. The stuff you bought from the store rather than the stuff that you use to record. So that IR, you can turn on. You've got an auto game feature, which is really good with this saturation control. You've got saturation, you know, the distortion you get from hitting tape, very key. Your low pass, as you use the tape more and more, you'd lose some high end as you lost a little bit of the magnetism on the tape. Uh, you got a bit of high end roll off, so you can emulate that. You've got noise, very, very important for emulating and wow and flutter, which is very common to do with the tape wheels and such and where the tape was, you can get really warbly. And of course, with a plugin like this, it generally goes too far. And the other thing you have is oversampling, which is great with any distortion plugin. I love having oversampling and it doesn't seem to be too bad on my CPU anyway, but oversampling, we'll just leave on time 16 the whole time. So first, we're just gonna listen to this song and then we're gonna mess around with the controls. I'll put it on and you hear what it's doing. Bypass off. Oh, oh, it's gone low fire straight away. So a lot of that's the low pass and this IR. So let's, let's turn the IR off and have a listen. Okay, so with the IR off, you've mainly got the effects of tape without that frequency kind of thing going on. So if you want something more subtle, more of the idiosyncrasies without the complete change in frequency, keep it off. If you put it on, it goes like this. Now we can turn this low pass up, so we're getting less of that, but it's not really the effect. We're going to keep it on for a little bit just to go through and listen to it. I reckon it's part of the sound, and then we'll toggle it on and off. Listen to that saturation. Oh, that's some real crushed tape. That is like, I rated it too hot. Um, just a little on that, we will keep going. Just a little on that, when I was saying I recorded it when I was 12, I recorded this U2 album, Boy. The first U2 album was my favourite album at the time. But I thought Red was better, so I turned it all up and it sounded like this. The kids didn't really mind, but looking back it sounded pretty bad. 
And then of course you go even more subtle. Pretty much no saturation there. Let's turn the eye off, so sort of have a listen. Audio gain kicks in. Roll it back up again. Bypass. Probably needs a little bit of output actually. So there it's nice and crunchy, we can use the low pass to bring it back down a little bit. Low pass goes all the way down to 500, I mean 5000 sorry, which isn't that low, just gives you that low five vibe. Okay, let's turn the IR back on. Ah, oh, it sounds so much like tape to me. It's actually really cool. Now, now some people might not hear what I'm hearing. There's this hollowness to it. Very lo-fi thing. Ah, oh, just, yeah. It's nostalgic. Okay, let's have a listen to the noise. I'll turn the saturation down a bit. So that sounds like sampled noise to me. Pause and have a listen. You've got, yeah, different kind of noises coming on there. I can't really hear a loop. Or oh, maybe I can hear a little bit of a loop. Yeah, I can hear a loop. But it sounds pretty good. So let's let's go here. Let's put it about there. And let's have a look at Wow and Flutter. Wow. Like a low speed. Oh, it's random too, which is good. Because take random. It's a little bit of it. So it sounds a little bit worn out. And let's have a look at Flutter. So that's some really high frequency, right? Modulation. So you don't want this much, you want it about here. Let's hear it without the IR, just for context. Should um, just loop the whole song, give me a second. Oh, listen to what, what it's doing. Oh, listen to that guitar, how it's affecting it, that wow and flutter. Let's turn it down a little bit. Bypass. Yeah, it's a song. Doesn't sound anything like a tape, though. Now we got the tape on. Let's put that IR on again. I'm going to switch back and forth with that IR a lot because... That is such an obvious effect. Um, so you can't al often hear the other effects with it. But let's uh, put the IR on and bypass again. So you know, here's your fresh off the press album. And this is what you get when you've played it a hundred times in your Sony Walkman. Now what would often happen when you're mastering a tape is you add enough high end to make up for the loss of high end and all that. So you could also do that. If you're using the IR, you could then use a bit of a treble boost going into it as if you're mastering for tape um, and then still get that effect. But it's really cool. But let's go a little bit extreme. Let's get that like my VHS is broken kind of deal or the tapes like running out and getting distorted. <laughs> This could be really cool for a little section or an intro to a song or in a video clip and 
And then, you know, if you add a little bit of... So we're, we've got it on the master bus. Let's just... um. Just for a little bit of fun, you grab an EQ or something, like we'll grab the infinite EQ here and pretend you're playing it outside, you know, in, in some shitty, shitty speakers in your living room. A little bit of this. So you've got your tape, you know, plugged into tiny little speakers or you've got your Sony Walkman uh, with some shitty speakers and then you have something like this. So you know, you actual hot off the press. Your actual song. Oh no, someone's playing yeah, it. Shitty Walkman. Nostalgia, baby, nostalgia. Uh, so that is really most of this plugin. Um, I did want to. What did I want to have a look at? I wanted to have a look at. Let's just have a look at some presets. So we're just going to um, pump some more of the song through it and have a look at some presets. And then I might just put it on just on guitar and see how you can use it as more of like a chorus plugin. So let's look at the presets. We've got bass movement. Oh, let's turn this EQ off. So bypass, just for reference. Now bass movement. Punchy coding. Punchy coding with the IR. Oh, that's very boomboxy, I like it. Exterminate. Which I'm guessing is meant to sound like a Dalek, right? Let's go Dalek y. Exterminate. I can't do it. I can't do the Dalek voice. Let's listen to some vocals, maybe. I was gonna chuck some vocals through this setting just, just for fun, because vocals are fun. It's your out there lying by the ocean. Yeah, great. Dalek voice. Anyway, let's move on. Gently, gently. A bit more subtle. Grandpa's piano. Ooh, that is probably meant to be an out of tune piano sound. Again, yes, you can try it on individual tracks, get some cool stuff going. Just noise. Just noise. Left in the sun. Bit of a cook tape here. Lightly toasted. So it's a bit distorted, not much else. Lo fi. Nice recording. Sounded very similar to lo fi, to be honest. Uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yeah, that's way out of tune. Just a little bit warm. Here's just a little bit of warm. Let's uh, bypass. Yeah, bold edges. That's cool. Fairly clean. Oh, it's very subtle here. Just a bit of saturation, really. Vibrato. So let's just try it. I'm going to bypass it. I just want to try it on some clean guitars. So we've got some clean guitars here as a bit of a chorus. If you've seen uh, the last free plugin Friday, which is Magic, it's the same guitars that we use there. Um, let me just find them. And so I want to use it as a bit of a chorus. So let's have a go here. So I'm using actually Chorus Juno 6, uh, which I also did a review on. It should be out as well if I've had time to edit it. Uh, but let's uh, turn that off and listen to these guitars. Let's just go to a section they're in, um, which should be here. It's 
Should do fine. For some reason didn't bypass. Uh, let's go add it in there. So tape, it is called tape except two. So keep the IR off and let's just use the wow and maybe some flutter. Let's have a listen. It's gonna be more of a vibrato. Um, again, we could use it in parallel for a chorus, but. Maybe we should try that. I'm gonna set it up as a send, actually. Let's try that. We set it up as a send um, and then use it as a vibrato. So it is gonna be in parallel if we use it as a send. So I've got these clean guitars. Uh, let's turn it off on the clean guitars. Cool as a vibrato though. And then go to vibrato send. So now we're sending to that. Um, turn the IR off. Uh, it didn't loop for some reason. Okay, let's add a little bit of wow in there. So it's not quite a chorus, is it? Just because of the phase relationship of sending it, but it's actually kind of cool, I think. Let's turn it over sampling down, see if that changes it. Nah, doesn't make any difference. Let's make it more subtle, maybe that'll be it, the ticket. Yeah, there is a phase thing going on there, you can hear it. That's bypassed. But anyway. You might be able to use in parallel with the right setup. Probably to do with the oversampling, maybe? Maybe not. Let's uh, delay constraint. That's better. If I put delay constraint on, it seems to work all right. A bit of noise, turn the IR off. I put up a bit. Bit of a strange one, but it kind of works in parallel too. And of course you could use it as a distortion plugin. You can use it as whatever you want. But that is Tape Cassette 2 from Callum Audio. Link in the description below. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Mm -hmm.